Clint Miner here from Sage of Sawtooth Bushcraft. Beautiful fall day. It's the 25th day of October in 2019. We're up in the, the Boise River drainage between the North Fork of the Boise and the Middle Fork of the Boise. <clears throat> We're up uh, an area called Horsehaven Creek right behind her, the camera. I'm looking right at Swan Home Peak and Swan Home Lookout. Just an incredible area. Uh, we were in here Wednesday, a couple days ago, and uh, right behind us, uh, a little bit off to the left here, were, uh, uh, we saw four elk early in the morning, came back later, and saw seven. Don't know if the four were part of the original group, but uh, didn't look like it. The, the second group of seven had a raghorn in it and uh, a, spike and then it had uh, one cow with a calf and a cow with twins a couple of calves beautiful time of course it's deer season we're looking for deer and we saw the elk in fact we saw more elk after that but this is beautiful country and we talked about the those coffee filters and how valuable they are as a pre-filter <clears throat> uh, particularly when I put two of them together we got a really good collection of the of the silt sediment uh, goo slime everything that was came out of that that seep pond that standing water and uh, so they're a great resource that way but there's a number of other things that you can do with these so we use these coffee filters to filter the water to pre-filter the water so that we could use it um, with our other purification methods and obviously that's a great use for a coffee filter. Let's see them over here. Um, but there are some other uses. And the, the first one I'm going to point out to you, um, just got one. Or gonna, I'm just going to use one. Another use I'm going to show you is just going to use one of these. And uh, I know it's a little hard to see flames with this kind of sunlight, but I want to show you. I'm going to use my cup because... Uh, this stuff burns fast. It is a very, very volatile um, paper. You can see it's just burning up quickly. It burns, in fact, so quickly that uh, the ashes are, are kind of uh, wispy and blow away. So that's obviously something that I could use to, to start a fire. It's still burning in there. Um, and give myself a head start on that fire. So if I've got some of these in a Ziploc bag or in my nestling cup, see that wispiness, in a nestling cup, then I've got a very good tinder source uh, to start that fire. But <clears throat> one of the things that I also always carry uh, in my bag is a tube of Carmex or some other petroleum jelly based product that I can use for chapped lips, scraped knees, any number of things like that. And one of the things I found is that it, because it is petroleum, it is a, a fire extender. So if I just take a very little bit of this, if I can get some to come out, very little bit of this and put it on here. Um, And put that away, and then I just kind of spread that around. Get it on as much of that paper as I can. Obviously, it's not a big deal if you get it on you. It smells pretty decent, and obviously, is very, very good for uh, for what ails you. Good for dry skin. Good for chapped lips. Good for scraped knees, like I said. Probably good for dried, cracked feet and and uh, and fingers. So now we've done that. We're gonna get the same kind of reaction out of this that we did before. As far as the areas that I haven't really gotten the Carmex on, I don't know if you can see, but it's uh, where I've gotten the Carmex is kind of shiny, and it actually looks like it's gotten a little wet. So, I'm going to take this now and start it up again, get it burning. 
you see that when it hits that Carmex, it slows down substantially, quite a bit, but still burning well and burning longer, not just frying right down to my fingers. So by creating a little bit of a fire extender, I've got something that will burn for a little longer, burn a little hotter, a little better flame, and allow me to get that fire started. So a little bit of a mixture of that Carmex and that, uh, that coffee filter creates a really good tinder source to, to start a fire, particularly with when you've already got a flame. So if you've gotten your flame with your ferrocerium rod and some fatwood, if you have uh, started a flame with your, your lighter or with a match, this is a really good way to get that initial flame to turn into something a little bigger, hotter, longer lasting so that you can get a fire going. So that's a second use that you can do with these, these coffee filters. Again, there's 200 in a package. The package would be twice this big, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, I can throw 50 of these in and it's not going to take up half an inch of room. So uh, another resource, another great use for this resource. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about another use for this great resource that we can carry in our in our day pack, our Mary Poppins bag, our bug out bag, our lone wolf bag, wherever you're carrying that. And that is obviously make coffee. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker, but <clears throat> I know that people who are coffee drinkers, it's a real, real issue to not have coffee. And obviously you can carry instant coffee. I've heard uh, various disparaging remarks about instant coffee. Again, I don't drink coffee, so I wouldn't know. But so how this would work is uh, we have a little bag of pre-ground coffee. Um, we take one of these and then we have some of the ever-present paracord and I simply take a, a strand of that paracord. Let's, let's just treat this uh, punk wood as though it was coffee. That's probably what coffee would taste like to me. I put it in my, my filter bag. I gather that filter bag up. I tie it with a ribbon. Yeah, well, not a ribbon, but a, a strand of the inner cord from a uh, paracord, 550. Drop that down in my cup and pour some boiling water in there and, and steep it just like I would a tea bag. And within a relatively short period of time, I'd have some coffee without a lot of grounds in it. So uh, another use for these coffee filters is use them as coffee filters. Along these same lines, one of the things we have out here in this country are a lot of plants that can be used to make tea. And some of those are simply for flavor. Some of those provide some other, other nutrients to our our little stay in the woods. And so what we have here is a branch from a ponderosa pine. Uh, it's funny how all pine smells the same, but then you get up here and start messing with the different kinds of pine and it smells different. But in any event, this smells an awful lot like I'm sitting under the tree as a young child <laughs> opening presents. This is a Christmas tree in my mind, at least how it smells. These needles uh, make an excellent tea, I don't know about excellent in flavor, but an excellent tea in that they provide a substantial, a very high source of vitamin C. So I bruise them a little bit, break them up just a little bit, get them ready, and just like when I was dealing with the coffee, I place them in my makeshift tea bag, get them all in there so that uh, they are ready to go. And in this situation, I think that as opposed to simply pouring boiling water over them and steeping them, what we'd probably want to do is, huh, again, since it smells like Christmas, we're going to say we tie it up with a ribbon, tie it up with a little bit of this uh, inner cord from the 550 cord. Put 
put that in my cup, put some water in there and boil that over the fire for a while. And I will end up with some pine needle tea. Um, that would be very high in vitamin C, a really great source for vitamin C. Something that if I was up here for any length of time trying to live on the meat, that really is the primary resource for food in this area, um, I'd need that supplementation of that vitamin C to keep from having gum issues, from having canker sores, from having ultimately having scurvy and having sores on my legs. Okay, we've gone through quite a few uses for this this product, this resource, these uh, coffee filters. I'm going to talk to you about another one, and that is this. You know, I, I said I could put 50 or more of these uh, in my nestling cup and still get my probably get my water bottle in there, especially if I didn't put the bandana in. One of the things that would happen if I were lost out here, let's especially if I were injured in some way that I really couldn't make long distance, I'd sprain an ankle, I could go a couple of hundred yards, but, but no more than that, is that these are, they don't look like nature, at least not if you put them in the right place. And I always carry, or always try and carry a Sharpie or a pen with me, I could write on this my name a little note that says 100 yards south And yellow bandana. I could put these around the trail in a way that, against a green tree or in a in a pine tree branch, in a way that people would see it, or in a, in one of these uh, tall. Um, choke cherry bushes or one of those things so that it really stands out and then I could build my shelter someplace where I where I could get out of the elements a little ways away from the trail without being concerned that somebody's gonna walk by on the trail and not know that I'm here when they're up here looking for me because I've left um, I, I've left word with my family that I'm going to only be here today that if I'm not back by tonight that they would come looking for me they know generally the drainage I'm in. I told them I was going to be at Horse Haven Creek. And they know that um, if I'm not back by tomorrow, there's something wrong. And if they come up here and find my truck and I'm not there, then they know that they're going to have to come up here and look for me. And this would be a great resource to spread the word a little bit and help them focus in and find me. And, and like I said, yellow bandana is something I always carry with me. Um, uh, there are some other personal significance of a yellow bandana that I'll talk about in a different video, but one of the great parts of a yellow bandana is that while it isn't hunter orange, it does certainly stand out against this, this backdrop. And if I had myself a shelter built of pine boughs and I was hiding under that to try and stay out of the weather, this sitting on the outside would be a signal, especially with a note explaining that, to tell people that I am there and that's where they can find me. You know, stay put stay calm, uh, stay warm, stay dry, and stay alive until they come find you. So another great resource that again, once I've used that, or I've marked a trail for, for a buddy who's coming up later and told him we, we took off on a different trail or that we're up the ridge, I've got all kinds of uses that I can write on this. Uh, but again, just like the, the, uh, the filters that we use to filter the water that are sitting back on the rocks here behind us, uh, I don't need to throw that away. I keep that for another resource because that'll still start a good fire. So that's another way we can use a coffee filter in this environment that can literally save our life. All right. I'm sure there are more, but I'm going to talk to you about one last use for this great resource that we can bring with us. That's these coffee filters. And that resource is one that uh, may seem a little silly and a little bit insignificant, but when you're in the mountains and you don't have it, 
it can be a real problem. And that is, while this is not the smoothest and the softest, these certainly are sufficient that single or probably more wisely used double ply, they would serve us well as toilet paper. And um, when I lived in Spain, they had toilet paper that would have made this look like Charmin. And uh, what we would do when we sat down to use the bathroom is start working that toilet paper between our hands to break down the fibers a little bit and soften it up. So as I'm getting ready to use the bathroom, as I'm in the process of using the bathroom, maybe leaning against a tree or over a log, I take the time to make sure that this is a little softer, a little more pliable, and a little more delicate before I go ahead and use it. Now I've done that and we have here then a, a paper that is fairly thick. Certainly with two plies it would be more than sufficient and uh, would be very serviceable as a toilet paper in a situation like this. If I, if I didn't have any toilet paper or I had already used my toilet paper and needed what they call mountain man money. So this is a great resource, a great product to include in your day pack, your bug out bag, your uh, overnight bag, your uh, loan bag. My Mary Poppins bag will have some in my truck so that if there's problems, I've got that with me at all times. Um, get yourself some coffee filters. If you're not a coffee drinker, make your your friends wonder what you're buying coffee filters for and then share this video with them. Again, as with all my videos, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for your support in this situation. Thank you for the, the subscriptions and the likes. Again, I'm going to tell you that uh, some people feel like they're a little worried about subscribing because it's going to lock them into something. And if you don't hit the notification bell, when you, when you hit that subscription button, you're going to have a bell show up. And if you then touch that bell, second tap, that bell's going to open up and allow you to um, get notifications about my videos. If you don't ring the bell, you're subscribed, and that helps me a great deal. But if you want to see the videos, you hit those notifications, and you'll get notifications. If, if you just kind of want to come back to the videos when, when and if you're ready for them, don't hit the notification, but that uh, either way, there is no obligation. There's no charge. The circumstances are simply this. In order for YouTube to take me as a serious pre presenter, they have to see that I have a certain number of those subscriptions, and that's how you are helping me when you subscribe. In addition, it's really nice to see those likes. That's the little thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up and let me know what you think about these videos. One last thing I haven't asked for in previous videos that I want to ask for in this one, and that is, will you please let me know what you like and what you want? Let me know what you want me to show in these videos. If you've got comments, if you've got other ideas for things like the, the uh, coffee filters, if you've got other ideas for, for uh, some of the things that I've talked about in these videos, if you know something that I don't know, I do these videos as much to learn as I do to share what I've learned. And so please put some comments down in the comment section. Clinton Miner from Sage of Sawtooth Bushcraft, thanks again. Get out in the woods and remember, if you're prepared, you're never really lost.